what are we doing today? Well, it's another Argo episode, I'll tell you that now. But I'm a little confused, things are way out of whack. Now, during the lockdown that's currently in place in Australia, um, most of the local restaurants are now delivering, which I think is great. They should have been delivering beforehand because I don't like the crowds and I really like to have a good choice of food brought to our door. We live rural and we've only got about probably two or three places that deliver. So our options are basically pizza, pizza and maybe a parma, which is still getting a chicken parma to your door here is still a revolution. Anyway, I'm going to munch on some lollies here and then I'm going to open some packages and talk about what we're doing with the Argo. should have mentioned that these lollies, uh, they came with a recent order from the local... Uh, the local Greyhound Track Bistro, and they make a good palmer, by the way. Anyway, let's um just jump straight to the package opening. I, I want to eat some of these. Then my mouth is watering for a good old red skin. <laughs> I had a mouth for a red skin. All right. So instead of paying six hundred and fifty bucks. Geez, I've got a mouth full of stuff here. And I've finished my mouth full. Well, okay. Let's get rid of these. That was a um, mouth full of childhood there. Anyway, look at this 500 gallon per hour bilge pump. <clears throat> now this is the exact... Well, let's change our camera up here. This is the exact same bilge pump that's in the $650 Argo kit. And uh, BC have had it for something like $30. Or around about that. I think $40 maybe. Um, and we've got the wiring and the whole pump unit here. Um, i also got a switch that's compatible with the mounting plate on the dash of the Argo. I can just snap out one of the slots and put it in there. And I've got a bilge hose kit. So uh, let's get this open. Now, something I noticed when I was looking at the um, description for this is it looked very similar to the kits that are sold on there as well, uh, on the Argo site. It's late at night and it's been a long day, so excuse the amateur video here. Now, um, this is the Bilge Outlet. The only real difference between what I have here and the kit that came with the or the Argo kit is there's a bit more wiring, and this little outlet is uh, black. So there's nothing a bit of spray paint won't fix if I'm really worried. But that's a little nylon screw fitting outlet. Just got a slot for a big fat screwdriver, which will be handy. And we've got a barb fitting and a couple of hose clamps. So uh, let's get this open. Um, now it is night time at the moment. I'm not going to fit it exactly yet, but through the magic of video editing, we'll be able to uh, see that happen fairly quickly. Now, of course, barb fitting fits over, and we put one of these little hose clamps on here, and that'll be good. And a bilge pump is in an adult proof packaging. I'm sure my apprentice could get into this in about 10 seconds flat. Me on the other hand, I'm going to swear at it for an hour. Oh. Yep. I wonder if people, if theft of bilge pumps is that big of a problem they have to put it into one of these high security packages like they do little tiny micro SD cards. Wow. But, um, a bit of brute force here should get me in. Also notice taking a run up. Alright, there's our bilge pump out. Warranty voided. I can't get, take it back now. And it's uh, very slippery. So, the whole setup looks pretty much like that. Now, the only thing I haven't got here that the expensive kit would have is a little right angle bracket and a couple of screws to fit a bracket in the right spot in the engine bay. However, I can either, I think I can probably engineer something, or I can just zip tie it in place. I don't think that's going to be a huge issue. But this is a 2.3 volt, uh, sorry, 12 volt, 2.3 amp. Um, which shouldn't be too bad for my switch, which is rated for like 20 amps. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to temporarily wire things up to the switch, and uh, we'll do a bit of a test run, and see how she goes. Um, I've got... A little pond liner outside that my apprentice uses for a pool and it's full of water at the moment we might be able to get away with using that uh, as a test vessel for this so uh, let's get a few more things open and do some wiring now the uh, first thing I should probably point out here 
a lot of boats are wired with a German standard and uh, it's brown for positive however I have seen in some Volkswagens where black is positive and brown is negative so just be wary of that just uh, I've unpacked a switch here which is a nice little switch but it's also illuminated now what that's going to mean is I'm going to need to switch both lines a um, bit like a double pole switch um, so I'll be running both of these off the switch that allows me to have a ground on the switch typically I would just switch the positive and leave the ground common but in order to make the illuminator work we need two poles so you can pause the video here if you wish and this is the pin out for the switch so, um, let's go and get this tested with my little test clips here and make sure that that um, light actually illuminates right so I'm wired up between pins 2 and 8 with 12 volts and it comes on nicely so our switch is going to work well um, now I've got to work out how to wire it up to actually use it interestingly this also has an illumination light as well it's not dependent on the switch huh it's interesting but I don't have any dash illumination on the um, on the Argo so I'll probably leave that bit unused right, let's have a quick look at the setup as it works so we have my little distribution board here is supplying at 12 volts to the switch so we have where's my card going here okay so we have um, negative to pin 8 here we've got our positive to pin 2 and we have our positive out to the pump on pin 3 that's literally it that's all we've had to put on here um, normally I would omit that if it was a non illuminated switch so we just have a switch positive 2 now the negative is also bridged directly to the pump over here in this little junction so we've got negative in negative to switch negative to pump so now we have a working bilge pump which has got a bit of grunt to it which is nice to see so let's solder these on because I don't trust uh, fittings in a wet I don't trust those crimp fittings in a wet environment um, and uh, actually no I'd probably better not do that because I will regret it when I come to put it in the switch panel and I have to unsolder it again so um, we might actually have to put crimp terminals on there uh, or I thread it through and solder it on after the fact you know what I'll put crimp terminals on and I'll solder the crimp terminals on that should help reduce the corrosion a bit hopefully though I don't drown this thing but you never know there's a reason there's going to be a bilge pump in it right, now we've got to um, do a bit of setup I found some crimp terminals some little ones I've also found the uh, wire I tend, intend to run back to the battery I've run about 10 amps on this in the past so I'm pretty sure two and a half is going to be just fine and uh, I need to adjust this up again this isn't set quite right so this is a little skinny for 10 amps but uh, 2.3 it should be perfectly fine more importantly I have a big roll of it now one of these wires has a trace on it I'm going to use that as negative so we're going to undo our little junction here and I'm going to join our negative wire here now these are already tinned wires and being marine grade stuff it's probably tinned copper all the way through it in, indeed it is uh, because that's standard for marine wiring so we'll get this in and I'm probably going to take this jacket off these actually there's some blue tack because I intend to solder these on the cheap Chinese ones they don't crimp real well so um, maybe I'll crimp it and then I'll get the jacket off there because that's a little easier um, these ones might have actually been heat set on there which is unusual for cheap ones anyway give me a moment I've got a good set of um, industrial crimpers here and they've got their ratchet crimpers that go in and then you can hit a release to release them or push them all the way through and the dot on this is usually the wire side and the color of the dot usually indicates the size of the wire crimp that it will do and I often find with these I have to do them on the blue crimp because the actual material is a bit thinner now I don't trust that I'm going to sink a little bit of solder into the back of that connector 
ourselves some extraction fan and um, so that should drag some of the fumes away and this can be tricky sometimes because you need to get that back piece the, the actual metal behind it quite warm and you need to duck around the camera which can be a challenge at times also and we should see it start to wick down in there that should be good to enough of a bond to resist a little bit of water um, the reason I'm so finicky about a bilge pump is uh, you know when you're in deep water and you've got a 500 kilo machine under you that is filling with water because you've done something silly like forget to put the bilge pump in it or forget to put the bung plugs back in when you drive in the water which is probable this little pump will probably just make some headwater and buy me some extra time to get back to land um, considering that thing's worth over twenty thousand dollars Australian and that was before the stock market crash um, caused by the coronavirus I don't think I can afford another one so little things can break the chain of disaster as my mother who is emergency services trained and a uh, member of the Australian Institute of Emergency Services has M-A-I-E-S after her name along with a few other letters um, she will tell you that any disaster is not one single event it's a chain of little events um, and all you've got to do is break that one link in that chain and you can often prevent a disaster bilge pumps and a little tiny bit of solder could be that thing Now that I have everything working, I'm going to disconnect my wires on this side. Now we know that this one here is going to be ground. And once I've got these on here, I will be um, labeling them so that when I'm outside, I can do the idiot thing and just plug them in. And these have been crimped a little too far. I need to pry them out slightly. Okay, a little tiny screwdriver just to pry the end of these up just enough to get the terminal in. Crimp terminals are a stupid idea if you ask me. There we go, we're in. Well, it's in nice and firm, but that's good. Alright, now, um, this one coming off here, this will be my positive from the battery. Again, same problem. You can actually, these are thin enough with this crimping arrangement that you can actually break them trying to get them on here. There we go. Almost lost a finger, but we're good. Okay, so that is the positive from the battery, negative from that. Let's just mark them first. That is going to be plus. That is going to be minus. All right, for negative. Now the pump wire, which is brun, brown. Actually, my wife would be the one to talk to about that. She knows German far better than I do. Um, and a few other languages, actually. She's my interpreter. Oh. Slippery Teflon wire. Now, this one we want to trim back a little, or a bit long. We'll crimp this on, and then we will put some solder in there. Um, where's my good ratchet crimpers again? yellow dot on the wire side which means that way I think these were designed for lefties yeah see that wasn't enough to crimp it down nor was that we'll have to go right to the smallest one yep this one is definitely going to need some solder so let's do that where is my solder you in here. So this one's a bit more accessible this time. Alright, bit of solder in there. Okay. Oh, and we've got a market. So this one is a pump, which is going to be pretty obvious. That is a plus. Oh, it's still hot. I can't imagine why that would be the case. On the other side, we are going to mark this as a P. Although it will be obvious for the fact that it's brown and not OFC cable. Okay, do it, neighbourinos. Let's put this back together. 
So these are the battery wires. I'm not sure what I'm going to be connecting these to, so I'm just going to tin the ends of the cable for a start. Do that. And we'll do that. Get ourselves some wire. Now, a little tip that a lot of people don't seem to grasp with soldering, and I'm just going to present that here whilst we're doing this. Um, you don't melt the solder. You melt the wire and you use the wire or your join to melt the solder. Doing this smidgen backwards just to demonstrate, but you really want to be getting both of those things hot. So I'm resting the iron on the top of the wire and I'm threading the solder into the gap between the two. Um, and usually if I've got it on a tinned bit of the iron, it should go very nicely. I've done that a lot slower than I would normally do for your benefit. I'm going to trim off the lump of slaggy crap on the end. Alright, so let's put some hose on and a hose clamp and I'll take it out to uh, my apprentice's spa bath. I'm going to do a hose fitting. Well these are actually about the right size. Who would think you bought a kit and the stuff in the kit is the right size? Strange twilight zone world we live in. It's like the other day when I got to the end of the fortnight and I had money left and I'm like, am I in the twilight zone? I just paid off all my debts and loans. I know I like to brag about that, but it's like the first time in history it's happened. And I'm happy. Right, I'll do this hose clamp up a smidgen. It's fairly low pressure stuff, I don't have to be too worried about it. I'm not going to do the hose clamp up on the other one yet um, because I'm going to need to remove it in order to fit it. But I am going to leave that fitting in there just for the hell of it. Alright, let's go find the spa bath. Alright, so this is one of the more unsightly areas of our house. Don't let the missus know that I told you about this. Um, and because of lockdown, things are very quiet. So you'll probably hear some domestic noise in the background. In goes our bilge pump, but then out goes our hose, um, and our bilge pump is unfortunately upside down, and I think my apprentice has left a set of gumboots in here. Oh, this pipe is very rigid, and it's like trying to get an eel to sit in a bucket. Um, not handy. Wow, I'm going to have to rotate the hose around a bit to make it sit right. Oh, and this water's cold. Okay. Close enough. Now, I have a big 130 amp hour battery connected to this, the old one out of my solar system. And we have our switch. So let's see. Well, it's spitting a lot of water out. Let's do it. Move this around. Let's do this a fountain style. That is a lot of water going in there. Alright, let's empty most of this out. I have no idea how much is in here. I'd hazard as a guess that this would probably hold about 300 litres. But, um, although we can tip it over when it's full, so it's probably closer to 100 litres. So we are, if we swing around here, just emptying it all onto the ground. And this is pretty typical of the junky water you'd find in a bilge. It is emptying it out pretty well. I think I'm seeing a critter in the bar. <laughs> okay, I think I know what that is. Let me drop this hose a bit. Ugh. Ha! Crikey, it's a croc! Right. Well, the bilge pump is sucking up all the junk out of the bottom. I might have to clean the filter. But, what's in here is probably about twice as what we had in the Argo sitting out in the rain for a full day so um, this is emptying in a few minutes so I think this will be certainly good for emptying the bilge and I'll find out the filter is removable on this so once it's emptied all of this um, we'll find out how easy that filter is to clean but it's working pretty well well there we go we're at the bottom all right Take it back inside. Okay, so it's daylight and it's time to fit a bilge pump and a few other things. And we're doing several videos simultaneously at the moment, which is why you can hear a generator in the background. Today though, I need to flip the canopy on this. 
uh, because it's on the wrong way around. Um, do a few repairs after wind damage. And then we're going to put the sides up because this sun is a little bit too warm for me. For most people it would be fine, but with me, with the MS, I'm sweating. So let's get this sorted out. I'm going to move this into the front yard and give it a little bit more run time as well. Make sure we're in neutral. Can break on. You ready? Okay, turn the key just a quick bit. Okay, wrong way. Turn it this way. cover off and welcome to my messy backyard uh, we're gonna move it over so I can strap it to the fence and then we'll try and put some sides up in fact I might try and put the sides up now and then put the cover over it, um, it might be easier for the wall side all right let's get cracking so that's the cover flipped and the poles slightly repositioned and the humongous ants nest in that tree stump over there is treated with something they keep coming back I'm going to get a professional on that job. Backyard's been nicely ploughed up by moving the Argo. Um, now to find some sides. All right, we're looking a little more studio-like now. Um, now I've got my trailer guy coming around in a few minutes to measure up the beast and get it uh, sized up for a trailer. So uh, I'm going to sit down and have a rest and have a break. I'm sweating. It's very humid, and now that the sides are up, the air is very still. Um, but we'll pull in here, be out of the sun a little bit, and uh, I'll be able to fit that bilge pump. And then we might do the unthinkable and fill it with a bit of water and see if the thing pumps it out. I don't really want to do that, but I'm going to need to test if the pump works. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, I'm going to go have a break and sit in front of a fan. Alright, so we're outside, back in the studio again, and it's time to fit this bilge pump. Now, I need to work out which side, because one of these sides has got a lot of junk in there, the other side's got a big open void. I think it's that side. I don't want to run the plastic pipe past this heat shield if I can help it. So, um, the problem with this is I now need to pull that firewall out. My arch nemesis, I don't like getting that firewall in. And uh, I've got ants crawling up my legs again. I need to call the exterminator. So, I need to pull that firewall out and the floor pan as well. Um, to work out which side I can mount the outlet. 
and then I need to figure out how I'm going to mount the pump. Now, one of the things about Argos is that they have these two little ridges underneath, and they act like gutters. And um, with the bilge pump in one side, it might not empty the other side, or it probably won't until you pull the bungs out, but it'll get most of the water out anyway. So we'll have to figure out um, which side we're going to do that on. Anyway, I'll uh, go do a bit of thinking. I'm still hot and tired, so we'll figure this out. And my apprentice doesn't want to go anywhere far away from this thing. And I've got more ants biting my legs, so I'm going to tend to that now. All right, it's the firewall out. Now I can get in underneath these corners here. Now, actually, there is... I have my hand up under here, and this is hard to do one-handed. There's a big void beside the heat shield there. That would work really well. But um, I'm a little worried about running over the top of all of this. Um, because that's our main drive belt in there. That's also the bit you don't want to get wet. Because um, your drive ability, that's your CVT basically there. And those two pulleys up there push together to adjust your gear ratio. If that gets wet, you're going to have a hard time driving anywhere. Um, but I can down here, I can see the bracket. Oh, there's a bracket on both sides apparently. Um, I think you can mount two bilge pumps in here to pump either side out. Um, but I think one bilge pump would be enough, at least to keep you afloat if you get a lot of water in here. Um, but yeah, I am thinking I probably should have ordered two bilge pumps. Anyway, um, we're going to get one in anyway, because that'll be a bit of a lifesaver. And then we'll have to test it somehow, and I don't want to fill this thing with water. Um, we might fill it with just enough to test the principle. Anyway, um, now that we've got that out, Let's, I think I might start with a switch panel here that's riveted in, but I think they're bust away panels, so I'll bust one of those panels out and we'll get the switch mounted. This is a kind of tricky angle to get, um, just because of the way things are. So we'll have to work with what we have. I'm going to continue the panels across from one side and we'll break this out if I can. All right. Give it a bit of a wriggle, 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 like a cat waiting to attack, like a really excited cat. Go, right, that's that panel out. Okay, now we've got to thread our wires through from the back. Right, let's, oh, if I can get to this. Now, guys, remember, the number three wire is brown and the negative is the opposite side. Um, there we go. Oh, this is loads easier than a car dash. Ah, right, so, what did I say number three was? Number three is brown, and black was the complete opposite, which means positive goes to the middle. All right, now I better run this back to the battery temporarily and just check that it's right. Battery cover off. Now our wire with the white trace was what we were using for negative. Um, let's just touch these on here briefly. Whoop, that was a zap like something's not right. Let's turn that off for a minute. Alright, um, something's not right. Let me go back over my footage. I had misread 348 and that was my left eye being a little bit dicky there. So let's try now. Alright, our pump runs. We've got our switch right. Oakley Oakley. Means it's time to shove the switch back in the hole. Hopefully the right way up. Go in like so. Yeah, I hope this is the right way because this is going to be a bit of force to get this in here. Oh. Yeah, this is going to require a bit of force to get this in. Alright, there we go. That's my horn. It's my headlights which don't actually disengage with the ignition. So at some point I might put either an isolation switch or an ignition relay in here. Right. Cool. 
I don't have the keys in my pocket. But headlights work. Okay, that's like a third of the job done. Now I'm going to try and get this wire back to the battery somehow, hopefully discreetly. The bit about um, auto electrics that I absolutely hate is getting wires underneath panels. Um, although luckily this is pretty spacious, it's not as bad to work on as some things. However, I think that can hide under a pipe there, and we can pull that bit through. And the other thing too is you can't use the chassis of this thing as ground because it's all plastic aside from the, the main subframe but uh, that's not even a convenient place for this. Alright, got that under there. Now I think I might get away with cheating and just tucking this under this plastic panel around here. So that is actually literally the side of the tub. <laughs> okay so Oh yeah, there's a little bit of stretch in that. We can hide that wire under there. Right, now we have to move the camera. The other way, we're going to hinge the seat up. And we'll come around over to here. You can see my sexy hands. Or my unsexy hands, depending on your opinion. I want to go around the outside of this handbrake cable because I don't want it to interfere with the cable mechanism. And there's a bit of a, a hole there, I assume, for cables to come through. Ah, okay, I see. Yep, battery cables come down through a grommet. So if we get these two, we can push them down through that hole. In fact, we might do things this way. It'll make things a little easier. Or not. Okay. This is going to be the challenging bit. Getting this, these cables through. Oh, actually, if I'm doing that, that would be unwise. So, what we really need to do is poke them behind and pull them through again. I've been trying to avoid chopping off the excess cable in this, but I'm going to have to do it um, right here because that will make my life about 10 times easier. Right. Figure out cable is not always the best choice for this. Ah, no, don't loop that way, loop that way. Thank you very much. Follow that cable channel behind, please. And then we'll go down through the existing hole. We're going to be here for a bit, we'll skip this. Alright, so we've got our wires threaded through the side and tucked in here for the moment till we get some terminals. Now, the intelligent among you may have questioned why I haven't run off this extra auxiliary circuit. Well, there's still something else to come for this, um, and that probably will need a fuse. But uh, in any case, the bilge pump, I'm going to put an inline fuse at the battery. Um, and the other thing is that all four of these circuits are taken up. Um, there isn't actually any way to connect to that block. And then there's strange little bullet connectors in here and I don't know where they go and I don't have a circuit diagram for the thing so for me it's safer to not use that um, there are some negative rail connections in here and it's set up for something I'm not sure what um, I'll have to find out maybe I'll get hold of the dealer he'll send me some diagrams but for the moment it's safer to go back directly back to the battery I do notice though um, I do have fan cooled brakes that's an optional extra that I didn't realize we had so uh, that's nice. Um, now from here we need to look down in the engine bay with a light source of some kind because this camera can see better than my eyes can and there's brackets either side. I've got to figure out which side I want to pump out and uh, maybe sometime in the future I'll buy another bilge pump. <sighs> so I have seen some of these get around with twin bilge pumps in them so um, yeah all right I'm going to do some thinking. Okay, so I've got my wires run up underneath the bracket up here. Let's lift our camera angle up a bit. Um, and there are some existing cable clips under here that I can use. Um, no, I haven't used split tube for this, so shoot me. But um, we're in there nicely. Now I've got my bilge pump mounted down 
in here, I haven't got it mounted, it's just positioned loosely. Um, I need to run my pipe up. Now I elected to go out the driver's side uh, for an important reason. It's easier for me to see whether the bilge pump is actually pumping water or not. Um, that's the main thing, plus also it keeps this plastic tube away from the exhaust heat shield a little bit as well. And that pump fits fairly nicely in there. And we've got extra tubes so I can probably trim off the length we don't need um, in that case. But for now I'm going to tuck that in here out of the way just while I figure out how to get that pump secure down there. Um, no idea how I'm going to do that yet and it's a really hard spot to film. So uh, I'll do some thinking off camera. Now I may have come up with a really stupidly simple solution. I'd almost go so far as to call it elegant. Um, because there's a bit of stretch in the body, I've managed to force that in underneath the bracket that's there. And the two captive nuts have actually locked into a recess in the top of the pump. I'll let the focus come back. So the pump is actually wedged under the bracket there. How long that will stay there on rough ground, I don't know. Um, but it fits. Um, and it allows me to get everything else installed and at least test the system. So, uh, yeah, we'll be happy in a moment. I'm dreading having to put water in this thing. I really don't, especially considering that won't get 100% of it. Uh, so I might need to get the jack and my jack board out um, before I put water in. But let's get this, uh, let's get to the scary pit and let's drill a hole in the side of my brand new $20,000 piece of equipment. Now, the bit I've been putting off, this needs to mount in there. Um, and it could be black, but it's, it's also nylon or Teflon. I've got a feeling if I paint it, it's going to look crappy. So I'm just going to leave it white. First world problems. Now, I need to work out which one of these is too big and which is too small. And I think my biggest one's going to be about right. And then I'm going to viciously attack that after I've made sure there's no wiring or tubing in the way. So, uh, yeah. Here goes nothing. This is the moment of truth. Let me just triple check that there's nothing in the way. There's a fair gap behind that. That's good. Now, we want this on a flat surface here where we can, where it's, yeah, nice and central looking. I'm going to have to eyeball this bit. That's just make a minute adjustment because there's no going back from this I think about there is central that there looks good right and crucially this needs to be well above the water line stuff. Right. right, now let's hope I didn't shave any wiring off. I tried to be gentle. Oh. Feels pretty good. Alright, now does it fit? Ha <laughs> ha, perfect. Alright, that could have gone worse. Let's put the nut on the other side, which of course I can't really film in here. Let's just shove a GoPro in there, which you might find interesting. You, you might not. Wow, this is like a thousand turn. I think it's designed for thick fiberglass holes. All right. The biggest problem I'm going to have now is how do I tighten up the bung plug? I'll tighten up the hose clamp. All right. There's our hose here. That. That length there should be just sufficient. I can cut this off and they've got joiners every few inches. So let's take a serrated sheep's foot blade and let's put a big gouge in the side of my new Argo. Um, actually, that doesn't sound like a good idea. I'll move over here. Let's come over here. The heat shield shouldn't be as much of a problem. All right, come on. There we go. It's all fairly tough stuff, this. I'm used to working with poly pipe and it's usually pretty soft and workable. This is soft, but not as workable. All right, 
Now let's see if we can get a camera angle in here. Let's see if you guys can see what's going on in there. I don't think you can, but we'll shove my hand under here anyway. I'll untangle all of this actually. Well, I could probably go another section there and it would probably make it. Will you make it all the way up in there? Better too long than too short, I guess, but I think that section will make it nicely. We'll cut another section off and we'll be right back. Cut one more section off and here is where you hear profanities bleeped out if I got it wrong. No, it fits. All right. Hose clamp can go on. We can fit on to the outlet. Now, I've got no idea how I'm going to do that hose clamp up. Um, yeah. Huh. Unless I shove a bit of silicon on it. But this would be the problem on both sides. Um, yeah. I'll do some thinking and I'll find a screwdriver. Come up with a compromise. I think I'm going to do this hose clamp up just enough that it's firm on this hose. Maybe I can squeeze it over those barb fittings in a really firm fashion. So maybe I might get a firm fitting that won't pop off um, without having to get a screwdriver in there. Let's see, can we get in under here? That's gone on considerably tighter. Oh, and I actually can't pull that off now. The barbs, I think, have done their job. All right, that was easier than I thought. In fact, actually, most of this has been reasonably easy. So, um, it's all good. So, now the bit I don't want to do is put water in here. I don't think there's much other way to do it. Let me have a think. So I've shut down the generator and the crickets have started. That's a sign my day is nearly done for. So, I've got some clip leads tucked away in here. I'm going to have to get in under that and put the battery cover back on properly while I've got the floor pans out. I've got some clip leads hooking these wires up temporarily if they don't contact one of the spanners down there and melt a clip lead. Um, our switch works, time to get the hose and I'm just going to put just enough in here to fill it up with a little bit of water to pump out um, and I might jack the rear end up a little bit, we'll find out, um, yeah, here goes nothing. So it turns out my hose is not long enough, um, which means I'm probably going to leave this bilge pump to test in the field, I do have another hose and a joiner but CBF. The main thing is the pump's in the right position to pump water out. It's not going to pump every last drop out unless um, it's high enough to bridge both sides, but it'll help keep me afloat at least. It's better than nothing. So, um, yeah, I might come up with some ingenious way to make a transfer pump or something, but I might just, when I'm more financial, buy a second pump and shove it over there wire them up in parallel all right so but mainly you can hear the pump running that's good so um i think we're about done throw them over the side yeah i'm gonna call it quits i'm tired and uh yeah i want to go inside have a shower it's been a sweaty afternoon all right i'll see you in the next one i hope this was interesting and I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of footage of it driving around and uh, my apprentice revving the throttle. So uh, anyway, I guarantee you guys as soon as lockdown's over and my trailer's finished, I'll be out to give you guys a drive around in this. You'll get to see it happening. Um, and anybody who's local, uh, when the lockdown's over, if you're not contagious, come and see me. We'll go for a bit of a bash in this thing. I got this just to have fun because I need to enjoy some stress-free time so I don't stir up my MS. So, um, see you all in the next video. Have a good one. Comment away. Do whatever you got to do on the YouTube thing. I'll see you later.